In today's video, I'm going to share how you can eliminate knots completely from your work. I use knots all the time, so this isn't a video to say you shouldn't. I know there are times where that bump can be really eye-catching, so I just want to show you how you can easily replace these if you want to. I've added timestamps along the progress line so you can skip to your point of interest, but before you do that, the big tip for any of these techniques is that you want to use a very long tail, but I'll go into more detail about that at the end of the video. When you're beginning a foundation row or a starting chain, you usually start with a slip knot. You wrap the yarn around your fingers, pull the yarn through, and tighten. But if you want to get rid of this knot, you can. To begin, make sure that the tail is facing you and in the palm of your hand. And then go ahead and tension your yarn like you normally would. Now we're going to replace that knot with a twist. To do this, you want to take your hook, making sure it's above the yarn, push down, under, and twist back up. At this point, your tail yarn is on top and your active yarn is underneath. Now that little twist there, we want to hold that with our fingers to stabilize it. So kind of move things around and pinch it with your thumb and forefinger. You don't want this to be too tight because we're actually going to be working into that loop later. And at this point, nothing changes. You just follow along with your pattern as normal. So let's say, for example, I need to chain six. Let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four. You can release that, don't worry about it. Five, six. And as you can see, there isn't a knot anymore. There's just a little twist there to hold it in place. Let's go back down with single crochets. We should have five. One, two, three, four. And there's your fifth one. Same area that you did the twist and created that little loop. Go ahead and create your final single crochet. Don't worry that it's loose like this. This is actually the beauty of this technique. It gives you way more control of how this is tensioned or tightened, because now you can tighten this as much as you need to. This can be a little fiddly to begin with, but once you get the hang of it, I think you're really going to like this alternative. Next up, we have the invisible join, and this comes in really handy when you're working in the round. Typically, when you fasten off in the round, you're going to go into the first stitch that you worked and create a slip stitch. And then you can either create a slip knot through that loop there, or you can just pull the yarn through and then weave in your end. Either way, you're going to get a lump right here. And your invisible join is going to replace that with a stitch. So because of that, whenever you do this technique, always double check when you're finished that you haven't accidentally increased your stitches. So once you've finished your final stitch, snip your yarn, pull the yarn through. Now you can do this with a tapestry needle or with your crochet hook. I'll show you with a crochet hook first. You're just going to take your hook and go through that stitch going under both of those loops, pull your yarn through, Going back to the original stitch, pull that yarn through the back stitch only. And as you can see, you've created the top of a stitch. But if you notice here, what's happened now is I've actually done an increase. It's supposed to have 24 stitches here, but if I go and I do a count, I'll have 25. If you want to avoid that happening, you can always just skip that stitch and do the same thing. It's a little bit more eye-catching here because you went over that stitch, but the top of your stitches will be even now and easy to work into. Now this is the issue when you're working in a continuous round, but let's say you're working on something like this. So in this instance, what I would do is I would just completely ignore that first chain three and work into that very first visible stitch. And what's going to happen is that invisible join or the stitch that I make is going to land on top of that chain three. So same thing, pull the yarn through. You're going to ignore the chains and work into the first visible stitch at the top. Going underneath both. Go 
going back over to the original stitch, going into the back loop only. And there you go. Your stitch count will be accurate here because your stitch that you made is sitting on top of that original chain two or three. So I hope you can see the difference there. Just always be mindful of your stitch count. If you started your round with a chain, then your invisible join or the stitch that you create with the invisible join will naturally land on top of that chain. But if you're working in continuous rounds like this, just make sure that you haven't accidentally increased. To fasten on without a slip knot, it's pretty obvious. You're just going to go into your stitch, and this is for rounds and rows, and you're just going to pull your yarn through. Again, it's essential that you have a nice long tail for weaving in later. Go ahead and hold on to that yarn to give it some tension. And that's all there is to that. You're just going to hold on to that yarn in the back of your work and continue on with your stitches. So let's say it's say chain three, one, two, three and then continue on. And I would just hold on to your tail for a couple of stitches before releasing it, or you can even carry that yarn as you're working. Even if you do decide to carry your yarn like this, I would recommend that you do make a nice long tail so you can do some of them under your stitches and then continue on with weaving some of it in. Another option is doing a standing stitch but omitting the knot that's on the side. If you're not familiar with standing stitches, I'll go ahead and add a link here. I've done a video that's completely dedicated to standing stitches with and without the knot. A standing stitch is really useful when you don't want to start with a chain. Let me show you a standing stitch with a slip knot. So there's your slip knot. Let's do a standing single crochet. I use this one a lot. This replaces my chain one. I go into my stitch, pull the yarn through, yarn over, and pull through both loops. And that is your single crochet or a standing single crochet. But as you can see, you have a little knot on the side and we can eliminate that. To eliminate the slip knot, Take the tail and put it in the palm of your hand and hold on to it. Take your yarn and wrap it from behind and over the top. Now create your single crochet. Going into the stitch, pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through two. And there you go. You've done the same thing but minus the knot. If you do it this way, you need to hold on to this tail for a couple of stitches and then you can release. For a standing double crochet, same thing, put the tail in your hand, hold on to it. This time yarn over twice. This is replicating the slip knot and your yarn over for a double crochet. Going into the stitch, pull your yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two kind of going behind it, you're not pulling through it, but you know what I mean. And now continue on with your double crochets as you normally would. Again, holding onto that tail until you've done at least one of those stitches, and then you can continue on. And like I said, I have a video all about that that goes into more detail that you can check out. To add a new skein without a knot, you're just going to backtrack a little bit, pull the yarn out, put the loops back on your hook. You're going to finish that previous stitch with your new skein of yarn. Don't forget to give yourself a nice long tail for weaving in later. Wrap the yarn around your hook, pull it through and you're ready to continue on. Now at this point, you can take your tails and carry them along, trapping them with the new stitches that you're making, or you can weave them in later. It's totally up to you. I know some crocheters love to carry the yarn and trap it that way just to save a little bit of the weaving, and then others that don't like the look of that. So it really is a personal preference. This comes in really handy when you want to start a new row with a different color. When you finish the end of the row, 
do the same thing. Pull the yarn back. And you're going to complete that final stitch with the new color. Give yourself a nice long tail for weaving in later. Pull it through the two loops. And you've just completed that final stitch from the previous row and brought in a new color. And then just continue on as you normally would. Again, you have the option of carrying that tail and trapping it within those stitches that you're making. It really depends on the project that you're working on. If you can hide it really well, then go for it. It doesn't have to be extra work with your weaving in just because you've omitted the knots. Just make sure that you're using a nice long tail. Weave that yarn in at least three different directions and you're good to go. If there's a technique that you find really useful, then be sure to leave a comment. I would love to read about it and I'm sure others watching the video would too. 